All right, we got breaking news in golf where the PGA Tour has suspended the players who have left for the Saudi-backed uh, Live Golf Series. Uh, when we're taking a look, Commissioner Jay Monahan sending a memo to the players this morning. It says those players will not be permitted to play in any PGA Tour sanctioned event, including the President's Cup. It also promises to suspend any players in the future who opt to play in the Upstart Series. PJ Tours in Toronto for the RBC Canadian Open this weekend, and Live Golf is holding its inaugural event just outside of London. All right, we've got Kyle Porter to uh, digest what we've seen so far with the breaking news <laughs> here today. It's the best that I can describe it, there, Kyle. Uh, what are your thoughts here from the tour and the letter from Jay Moynihan? Well, it's been a it's been a crazy week, Tommy. One of the, one of the crazier weeks I can remember in terms of covering professional golf, and I. I, you know, there, there's not a ton of surprise from Jay Monahan's letter. It seems like players are indefinitely suspended. There was no timetable uh, given for either guys who resigned from the PGA Tour, who who he said will not be allowed will not be allowed to play in PGA Tour events on sponsor exemptions, or the guys like Phil Mickelson, who have not resigned from the tour and uh, will not be allowed to play PGA Tour events as well. So. All of those players, there's 17 in all, uh, have been indefinitely suspended, including uh, Dustin Johnson, Phil Mickelson, uh, Taylor Gooch, and several others. So, uh, again, not a ton of surprise. I actually, if I'm being honest here, Tommy, I thought the tone of the letter was not as aggressive as I thought it would be. It's been a big week for Live Golf. You know, you and I have talked a lot about this. Everybody's seen it happening on, on Twitter, online. Uh, the 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 first uh, round of the Live Golf Invitational Series is on uh, you know watching it on YouTube right now. So a bunch of things are happening, and I I don't think the PGA Tour's response has been commensurate with how much momentum Live Golf has gained this week. And I I didn't think the letter uh, was was very heavy handed it, it, at a moment when it felt like it needed to be. And, and so. I don't know. I don't know if there's more to come later on, but that was sort of my initial reaction to uh, to Jay Monahan's letter from the PGA Tour. It's two pages long. He, there is some verbiage there of like turning your backs, and to your point, a lot of other small things, but not as heavy-handed as you pointed out. Can you clarify something here that I think people are also bringing up on social media? So obviously, there's the names, and then the names with the asterisks, meaning the guys that have submitted or resigned from there. So. Can they be suspended if they resign because they left? Or, or how does that work out? Is it more just calling them out, so to speak? Yeah, so that's a great question. They cannot be suspended because they're no longer part of the membership of, of, of the PGA Tours organization. But what they can do is, uh, let's take, for example, the Travelers Championship uh, here in a couple weeks. Uh, it, it's right after the U.S. Open. Uh, the Travelers Championship has X number of sponsor exemptions that they can give out. I, I don't know what that number is. It's usually three, four, five, six, something like that. And theoretically, Dustin Johnson could go to the Travelers Championship and say, hey, I'd like one of your sponsor's exemptions uh, to play in this tournament. I'm not a PGA Tour member anymore, and uh, you're allowed to give out those sponsor exemptions to, to non-PGA Tour members. They're given out to amateurs at times, players all over the world. Uh, what Jay Monahan is saying from the PGA Tour's perspective is, uh, if your name is on this list, we are forbidding the Travelers Championship or, or any tournament on the PGA Tour from giving a sponsor exemption to those players. So it's kind of a roundabout way of banning players from playing on the PGA Tour, but effectively uh, it has the same uh, sort of outcome for those players. All right. He does in that letter also talk about, yeah, they have thought about what if these scenarios, of course, we do have a response from Live Golf that was just sent out uh, minutes ago. Let me read it out here and get your reaction here, Kyle. Today's announcement by the PGA Tour is vindicative of the deepens the divide between the tour and its members. It's troubling that the tour, an organization dedicated to creating opportunities for golfers to play the game, is the entity blocking golfers from playing. This certainly is not the last word on this topic. The area of free agency is beginning as we are proud to have a full field of players joining us in London and beyond. Your thoughts? Well, I think it's... <laughs> It's kind of a good point that uh, you know, and, and I get I get where both sides are coming from. That was the count. That was the the card for Live Golf to play was wait a second. Like you're supposed to be uh, the organization that gives players opportunities, and now you're not. And and it, you know, there I think the one thing that that needs to be kind of said out loud here, Tommy, that is kind of the elephant in the room is these are not um, these organizations are not on equal playing fields. Live Golf has so much more money to be able to throw at players, and you saw that. In Jay Monahan's statement uh, from the PGA Tour, that he, I think he said uh, he said something like, 
Uh, I think players and sponsors are tired of hearing about money, money, money all the time. And um, the reality of the situation is that, you know, it's cliche, but cliches are, are, are cliches because they're true, is that money talks and money has talked for live golf. And so you're getting organizations that are um, they're are, they're trying to argue or uh, fight over the same things, but they're on very uh, unequal footing. Live golf has so much more money. Uh, than the PGA Tour, and it creates a kind of a, a, an inequity there that the PGA Tour is going to have a hard time. They're going to have an uphill battle fighting that. They can't get into a money war with uh, Live Golf because they're not going to win that. So, so what do you do? How do you kind of get around that and and maintain your uh, membership, maintain the Rory McIlroys, the Justin Thomases, the Colin Morikawas of the world? It, 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 I thought a week ago or two weeks ago that they wouldn't have a huge problem doing that, Tommy, but now. I don't know. My mind is starting to to be shifted a little bit to think that the PGA Tour is actually in some 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 serious trouble here. Yeah, and from that letter, it's like the the dream of getting a card is what Jack Arney and then Tiger further. It, it seems like because we've been talking about like money, morals, and for the PGA Tour, legacy is a big thing that they're playing up to to hopefully maintain. Obviously, what they have. A couple more before I let you go here. Um, what's next here? You think because at first it was like all right, the events here. Then we're waiting for responses, which we got from the USGA, and now the PGA Tour. What do you think uh, comes next, or, or what are you looking out for here? Yeah, and to your real quick to your point about that, Rory McIlroy actually talked uh, recently. I think it was uh, I think it was last week uh, at, at Muirfield Village at the Memorial about how when you're a young player, when you're 19, 18 years old, you don't care about legacy. You're trying to make you're trying to get a job, make money on the on on, on in professional golf. And so I think live golf is sort of playing to that desire from um, from from humans. So all of us are trying to get jobs to make money, right? And 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 they are. Uh, sort of playing into that. As for what's next, I think there are two things. One, you're going to see more players defect uh, to to the Live Golf uh, series uh, to to that group. Uh, there's a ton of names rumored out there right now. Um, I, I've I've heard a lot of them. I don't know how comfortable I am sharing those uh, publicly, but uh, they're top hundred guys and they're big names. They're guys that have contended for major championships. Um, so there's going to be more guys that go and play. We've also obviously already heard about Bryson DeChambeau and Patrick Reed that go and play. Uh, that event in Portland, which is, uh, I believe, three weeks from now. And then the next thing, the big thing, Tommy, and, and kind of what the future of all of this hinges on is what do the major championships do? What do, what do those organizations, the RNA, the USGA, Augusta National, and the PGA of America, how do they respond? What is their response? USGA has already responded, kind of kicked the can down the road a little bit, has not taken a long-term stance. They took a stance on next week and said, Hey, it's still open. Everybody's still invited. We're, we're just going to host the U.S. Open. But that buys them another year or six months or whatever uh, to make a final decision. And, and what do those organizations decide? Because that if if all of a sudden the major championships say, you know what, we're not going to be part of this. If you want to play live golf and still play in the U.S. Open or the Masters or the PGA Championship, that's fine then you're going to see the floodgates open and a, a lot of players that maybe you might not have expected go over to the Live Golf Series. Last one. I have to ask you because we're, we're seeing it and watching it unfold. How do you describe the golf right now, Live Golf over in London? Well, it's been interesting. I, I personally went into it uh, pretty pessimistic, uh, almost not wanting it to succeed for a variety of reasons. I don't think that Live Golf is an organization that has a business model that really cares about its fans or it's not incentivized to do so. Uh, but I have to say the production and the golf have been pretty good so far. It's been quick. It's been fast paced. They have the luxury, Tommy, of not having to run commercials because they're dealing with a seeming unlimited amount of money. Uh, and so I don't know if commercials and all that stuff will come later on. But uh, it was easy to make fun of the shotgun start, you know, starting everybody on holes 13 and 17 and four and all over the place. But the fast paced nature of it and the fact that the round is only going to take four, four and a half hours, it's actually be, been somewhat compelling so far. So I don't love reporting that, but that's been honestly how I felt uh, about the Live Golf uh, event so far in London. Yeah, they've got the interesting graphical bar there for the team format. And, and as I'm watching it, I've got the feed right now. They're sort of overlaying. Uh, the instructions of the team format, which I'm sure they'll continue to do as they uh, push this event to golf fans, not only here in the States, but around the world. Our thanks to Kyle Porter again with the breaking news. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.